time. I want you to cast your mind back to the last time you had a coffee experience that was exactly as the barista described. Now, we all know how good moments like that feel. You know why they feel so good? Because of trust. Every time we create an expectation, we're making a promise. When we deliver upon the expectation, we're keeping that promise. This builds trust in any relationship. Now, I know you all love specialty coffee, and if we want to see this industry thrive, we need trust. Trust allows us to connect specialty coffee to the cafe customer. And if we want to keep them there, we need them to be engaged, learning and understanding more about coffee quality. In order for a customer to really appreciate coffee quality, there has to be an understanding of the decisions made by the barista and how these reflect the passion and the hard work of both producer, roaster, and how this all translates to the final experience in the cup. So over the past months leading up until this routine, I've explored every variable I can imagine, and the decisions that I've made will be the focus of the next 15 minutes. All of the key information is on the placements in front of you, so sit back, relax, and let's get into it. Starting with the coffee, for all three courses, you'll be drinking an anaerobic natural sidra produced by Nestor Lasso on his farm, El Diviso, in the region of Huila, Colombia. Now, over the next 15 minutes, we're going to be building your signature drink, linking the key decisions I've made to the ingredients I've used, to the flavor notes that you'll experience in the cup. Now, I'll purposefully split the signature drink into two components, because we're going to highlight different elements of El Diviso, and we'll bring them together at the end. So just as I'm asking you to trust in me, I've specifically chosen to work with Nestor because I trust in him, his experience as a producer, and the decisions that he's made that have better allowed me to deliver upon my descriptors, building trust with you in each course. So the first key decision I'll be introducing is Nestor's, and that's his decision to ferment the coffee for 80 hours anaerobically. This led to higher concentrations of organic acids, bigger, definable flavors, which I find directly improves the accuracy of flavor for your espresso course. So please slide down to the signature drink section of your score sheet. We're going to represent this by adding five grams of lacto-fermented passion fruit. Now, I prepared this by combining one part passion fruit with 1% salt and fermenting at room temperature for five days. I chose passion fruit because it has a vibrant citric acidity, and paired with El Diviso, it's going to create a new flavor note of plum, if you'll please write that down in your signature drink. So now turning your attention to the espresso course. In your espresso, you'll taste flavor notes of black currant, red wine, and peach. The tactile will be a medium weight. It'll have a juicy texture and long lingering wine-like tannins on the finish. Now, flavor calls are a key component of trust. If something were to happen with my extraction, the experience wouldn't match the expectations. So, so I can ensure that this extraction is just where it needs to be. I'm using the waste distribution technique. So the waste tool I'm using has a series of pins designed to distribute the coffee, sorry, to cover the surface, the entire surface area of the basket. Now with multiple spins of this handle, the coffee redistributes itself from top to bottom and side to side. 
All of this lends itself to a more even and dependable extraction, so that I know that that flavor note of black currant is both in the cup and it tastes delicious. So please slide down to the signature drink section once again. We're going to represent this by adding five grams of honey produced by the bees on the farm in Colombia. Now, I chose this honey because it has a complexity that reminds me of El Diviso. And in your signature drink, that's going to create a balancing sweetness and a flavor note of sultana, or depending on where you're from, golden raisin. Now, on the placement in front of you, you'll see an aroma disc. When I serve the espresso, I'll ask you to please assess the crema and place the disc directly on top of the cup. We're going to let your espresso cool to 50 degrees, which is really going to highlight that flavor note of black currant. And in the meantime, the aroma disc is going to capture all of those volatile aromatics, giving more prominence to the flavor notes I've just given you. Now, whilst these are extracting, I'd like to introduce the third key decision. To refine those beautiful red wine tannins that you're about to taste, my roaster and I finished the roast at an end temperature just two degrees higher than first crack. This resulted in lighter external colors. And from here, we extended the post first crack development to 24%, ensuring solubility and sweetness. So just assessing the crema and placing the disc on top of the cup. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. So just placing that little purple disc on top of the cup. There we go. Thank you. Cheers. Now I'll get you to slide down to the signature drink section once again, because we're going to represent the complexity of those tannins that we've highlighted through this decision by adding five grams of cold brewed hibiscus tea. Now, I prepared this by combining one part hibiscus with 15 parts water and cold brewing for 12 hours at four degrees. I chose hibiscus because it has wine-like tannins reminiscent of your espresso. And in the signature drink, that's going to create a new flavor note of cranberry. Now, in a moment, I'll ask you to enjoy your espresso. When I do, please remove the aroma disc, placing it to the side of the cup. Stir, placing your spoon in the silver cup, and enjoy across two sips. So go ahead and enjoy. Okay, so now we're going to move on to your milk course. If you'll please write down the following descriptors of cherry, butterscotch, and milk chocolate. Okay, so now I'd like to share with you some of the decisions I've made to deliver upon these descriptors and building trust with you in this course. So after a lot of fine tuning, I found that by steaming the milk to 55 degrees and serving the drink at 50 degrees in the cup, we're going to really highlight that flavor note of cherry. And now I am so excited to introduce to all of you the fourth key decision which is milk cryodesiccation. So how it works, 
is we placed frozen milk into a chamber. I've reduced the pressure, creating a vacuum, and applied a gentle heat over the course of 24 hours. Now, this combination of vacuum and heat caused the frozen water in that milk to turn directly into a vapor, leaving behind a powder of milk concentrated by 900%. Now, I've left some of that in front of each of you if you'd like to have a look. There we go. Enjoy. Now, from here, we've recombined 30 grams of this cryodesiccated milk powder with 300 grams of the original milk I froze. This doubled the concentration of sugars, proteins, and fats, directly improving the taste experience and the texture of the drink, whilst lifting up those beautiful qualities of El Diviso. There we go. Enjoy. Thank you. Now, I found this is best expressed in an extraction of 22.5 grams in, 40 grams out in 28 seconds. I've combined this with 90 grams of this delicious cryodesiccated milk blend. There we go. Enjoy. Now, you may have noticed that I've left the milk extractions to cool throughout the routine. I've done this because it really highlights the acidity of El Diviso, lifting up that beautiful flavor note of cherry. OK, enjoy. There you go. Now, inspired by the concentration of flavor and intensity that we achieved through cryodesiccating the milk, please slide down to the signature drink section once again. We're going to be adding seven grams of cryodesiccated date syrup. Now, I prepared this by combining one part date with one part water and sous vide for three hours at 60 degrees to highlight the natural flavors of this ingredient. Similar to your milk blend, I've cryodesiccated this syrup, doubling the concentration of sweetness and flavor. Now, I chose date because it has notes that remind me of your milk course. And in your signature drink, that's going to create a flavor note of toffee. So now, we're going to move on to your signature drink. If you'll please write down the following descriptors of plum, cranberry, which are the ones I've already given you, Sultana, and sweet toffee. Now, my goal today was to build trust through the key decisions I've made to deliver upon my descriptors in each course. We've introduced four of those decisions and inspired by them four ingredients, which has given us the four flavors I've just mentioned. Now, here I've got one double espresso of the milk extraction in combination with the cryodesiccated date syrup and the cold brewed hibiscus tea. I've nitrogen flushed it and held it on a hot water bath. And this is going to highlight texture in the drink. Over here, I've got one double espresso of the espresso extraction, the lacto-fermented passion fruit, as well as the Colombian honey. Now, I've been using a magnetic stirrer to mix the ingredients whilst aerating the drink. And that is going to highlight sweetness and articulation. Now, just like your espresso course, I'll be serving this drink using aromatic discs and at a temperature of 50 degrees. Now, I'll ask you to wait until I call time before assessing the drink. And when I do, please remove the aromatic disc, swirl for three seconds, and enjoy across three sips. Now, as I said at the beginning, every cup of coffee we make is a promise. And all my experience in this industry means nothing if I don't use it to create trust 
and to connect with people. So I hope you all feel that I've delivered upon my promises and created a level of trust that has brought the five of us closer together. Time. <laughs>